In today's video, we're gonna make this awesome crosscut sled, but before I begin, let me briefly talk about what makes this thing so awesome. The first thing is the form factor, and the most important thing for me was to make this something that's really small, light, and it's something I'm gonna quickly uh, go to when I need to crosscut some pieces instead of using a miter gauge. Now, this has a depth of right around nine inches, so meaning you can cut a piece that's up to nine inches wide, and to the left of the blade, you've got almost 24 inches that you can use your, your stop block. Now, if that's not enough, I've added the ability to include this little extension wing that connects to a groove in the back of the fence that will give you an additional 24 inches that you can use your stop block on. Now, if the, uh, the left side is not where you need it, you can pull it off, slide this bar to the left side, and you can put it on the right side of your fence. So that way, if you're tilting your blade and you're cutting some miters, you can have the stop block on the right side and the extension wing is gonna give you a little bit more uh, length to put your stop block. So with this thing dialed in, it's uh, something that I'm extremely happy to have in the shop. And let's check out how to build it. This entire crosscut sled is made out of less than a half a sheet of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. The first step was to rip a 24 inch wide strip from the sheet, which contains all parts of the sled, including the extension wing. The track of my saw isn't long enough for the sheet because Baltic birch typically comes in 5 foot by 5 foot sheets and my track was only 55 inches. This meant that I had to make the cut and then slide the track forward to remove the remaining waste. It wasn't a big deal as I can reference the other edge to clean it up. Over at the table saw, I set the fence to 11 and a half inches and then cut the base out of the strip of plywood. With the base only being 36 inches long, you can use the remaining waste for other parts of the sled, so hang on to that. Next, I move the fence to two and a half inches and then cut the strips for the front, rear, and extension fences. This is a little oversized. Since I'm gonna laminate these pieces together, I wanted to leave a little bit of room for cleanup. Using my miter gauge, I cross cut the first strip to a little over 17 inches for the front fence. This one strip is long enough to get both pieces since the final thickness for all fences is one and a half inches. The next fence I cut to length was the extension fence. The final length was 24 inches, so I cut the two pieces to 24 and a half inches. Since my miter gauge stop block won't reach 24 inches, I cut both of the pieces at the same time. And finally, I cut the two remaining strips down to 36 and a half inches for the rear fence. As I previously mentioned, all fences are one and a half inches thick, which is achieved by gluing up two pieces of the three quarter inch plywood. I start with the rear fence. On the pieces this long, it's easy to clamp them in such a way that the boards are no longer flat when they come out of the clamps. So I put a strip of wood on both sides of the plywood sandwich to help promote even clamping pressure during the glue up. For the remaining two fences, I repeat this same exact step and then let the fences set in the clamp for a few hours. While the glue is drying, I can move on and work on the base. I begin by cross cutting the piece to length using my track saw. I scribe a line at 36 inches, place some scrap under the plywood and make the cut. I guess this is a good time to talk about the hardware that I'm using for the sled. For the runners, I opted to use a couple of metal miter bars that have adjustable set screws to dial in the fit in the miter slot. The next few components were given to me by Rockler to use in this project, and the first are a set of hold downs that will go in the base T-track. The next piece is a fence cap which also has a 3 inch flip stop, and finally I'm going to cut a few smaller pieces of T-track from this 36 inch strip that they gave me. With the glue dry, I can go back to working on the fences and that begins with cleaning up one edge at the joiner. This process restores a nice clean edge for referencing at the table saw. The front and rear fence are cut to a width of two and a half inches first at the table saw. The extension wing is gonna be cut to a different width due to the differences between the fence cap and the T-track and let me show you why that is. The reason that the extension fence needs to be a 32nd of an inch taller is because the T-Track uh, sold by Rockler is a little bit thinner here at the bottom of the channel versus the, uh, the fence cap, as you can see here. So in order for those to, to be perfectly lined up, we need to make the extension fence about a 32nd of an inch taller than the, uh, the fence that's on the sled. As you can see, the bottom of the fence cap is a little bit thicker. So I move the fence over a 32nd of an inch and then I cut the fence to width. Now I can cut the fences to length and I always begin by cleaning up one end followed by marking and cutting the opposite end to length. For the rear fence, I actually use the Rockler fence cap to mark the correct length to make sure that it's perfect. This is important for my sled because the extension fence needs to butt right up against it for the flip stop to slide smoothly between tracks. The fence cap has an eighth inch spline that runs down the center of the bottom side. 
It's made to be attached to a 3 quarter of an inch fence, but since my fence is an inch and a half thick, I need to cut a groove down the center of my rear fence. To do this, I raised the blade to the correct height, and then I made a pass. Next, I put a 3 quarter of an inch dado stack in the saw to cut all kinds of grooves. The first groove I cut were for the T-track and the base. After cutting the first track, I measured over for the second track and made the cut. The extension fence and the rear fence will have a 3 quarter of an inch groove on the back for a miter bar. This bar will be used to connect the two fences. It's super important that you reference the bottom of both fences when you're making this groove because the fences, as you remember, are a different width. Now I'll start to remove the waste for the insert and this is where I start to make a couple of mistakes. Let me show you a little mistake that I made on this. When I was cutting this, I just set the fence to 10 and a 16th, which is wrong because I didn't take into account the thickness of the dado stack. You always want to measure from the edge of the blade to the edge of your fence instead of just going off of your fence because you've calibrated your fence to an eighth of an inch blade. This obviously is way thicker than that. So this is over five eighths of an inch more this way. This little channel right here needs to be, or supposed to be three quarters of an inch wide instead of this eighth of an inch uh, channel that it is now. So I'm going to remove this little eighth of an inch island right here and just butt that insert up against the T-track. And what that's going to do is it's going to make my blade no longer centered on that four inch uh, removable insert plate. It's not that big of a deal. Um, it's just going to be something that I notice from here on out. But for you to avoid that, make sure you always measure from the right side of your blade to the fence and don't go off of your fence's measurements because you're using a thicker blade. I make a pass to remove the waste, move the fence three quarters of an inch, and then another pass and it's rinse and repeat until the four inch channel is cut out. The front and rear fence also have a channel cut out for the insert. I place the front fence four inches from the edge and then I transfer the marks from the base to know where I need to cut. And this is the second mistake that I made. As you can see, I started marking the right side of the channel using the groove for the T-track instead of the edge on the channel of the base. This left me with a wider channel for the insert. It's not a big deal, I just made the insert a little bit wider, but if you do make this sled, don't make the same mistake and then mark the correct locations. To keep the sled light, I removed waste from the top corners since it's not really needed for supporting the pieces. I have a couple of templates that I will include for you to download and print out. I taped them on the sled and then I cut the waste off using the bandsaw. Then, using the spindle sander, I got the curves looking a whole lot better, but at the end of the day, this isn't a piece of furniture, so I wasn't too concerned about the accuracy or the look of the curve. The front fence looked a little blocky, and to make it look better, I used a French curve to draw a pleasing curve on both ends. The bandsaw got me close to my lines, but the spindle sander and the disc sander took it home. All pieces are made, so now we can start to assemble the sled. I begin by cutting two T-track pieces for the base. I used the miter saw for this, but swapped out my stock blade for an aluminum cutting blade. The remaining T-track was cut to 24 inches to fit the extension fence. The inserts are made out of quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. I cut a four inch strip to width to cut the pieces out for the base and the two fences. To install the inserts, I made a few marks and installed half inch number six screws. The miter bars were installed by gluing them to the bottom of the base by first putting a couple of shims in the miter slot to raise them up to just above the top of the table. Next I put some CA glue on the bars and then I place the sled on top. After the glue dried I flipped it over and installed six 3 quarter of an inch screws. The front fence doesn't need to be precisely aligned with the blade, so I clamped it into place, pre-drill, and install a few screws. The rear fence does need to be precisely aligned with the blade, so I begin by cutting a kerf down the sled base and stopping a few inches from the edge. You don't want to cut through the base at this point. Using my double square, I pull the fence in until it's perfectly perpendicular to the blade, and then I clamp it into place. The clamps will keep it in this position so that I can install a few screws. To confirm that my fence is perfectly dialed in, I did the five cut method, and this method has been covered by people way more talented than me, so I'll link to an awesome video below that was made by William Ng. He explains not only the reasoning behind it, but also show you how to do it. 
Using the double square got me really close so I didn't have to move the fence, but again, the video will show you how to move it, and what's really important is which direction that you need to move it. Now I can start to install the accessories. I begin by installing the T-Track and the base. The fence cap has an aluminum spline that sits down inside the fence, and since I own a saw stop, I'm gonna cut a notch out of the cap. Hitting aluminum with the blade will cause the brake cartridge to trigger, which is a bad idea. This notch will give me more room to cut thicker material. I then install a few screws into the fence cap down into the rear fence. To attach the miter bar to the extension fence, I install three screws and then I put the fence into place to align the T-Track. I clamp the track into place to prevent it from moving and install the screws. Finally, I put yet more screws through the miter bar on the back of the rear fence to connect it. With this sled complete, it's ready for prime time. It's packed with features and it's light enough to keep me using it for a long time. The replaceable inserts turn this into a multi-purpose sled and the extension fence lets me cut longer pieces with the stop block. I want to mention that this sled is not a unique design. I've copied features from sleds I've come across including one from the Wood Knight and then a bunch of others that I've seen here on YouTube and Pinterest and, and Instagram and all over the web. Um, I will link to Paul's video below if you want to check his version out but again I've just copied features that I found useful and put it all into a version that I like. So if you think that you'd be interested in building this version, I'll have downloadable plans on my site that are free and that I'll link to in the description below. But thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next build video.